A very warm welcome to the video, guys. Today we are talking about blood testing for athletes and why it is one of the most, I guess, underappreciated and underutilized interventions uh, that can really improve your performance, but not only performance, your health overall, which is, you know, you can't put a price on your health. So, you know, if we think about something like cycling or something like triathlon, all these sports, so many age group athletes, and this is just a generalization, but they'll spend a lot of money on equipment, a lot of money on training, getting the best coach they can find, a lot of money on diet, everything else, supplements. But one thing that many people neglect is getting adequate blood testing for specifically for their sport. And what I mean by this is, you know, you can go and get your, your yearly health check and you're probably going to look at a full blood examination, probably going to look at your triglycerides, your cholesterol, your HbA1c, so measure of diabetes risk or insulin sensitivity, blood glucose, um, you know, gen very general things, liver function, kidney function. These are super important for your overall health and performance, but things that won't often get included in a general health screen are what we have on the right. Not the first one, but from two to seven. Um, so this is vital if you really want to try and maximize your performance and think about it like this, you know, you wouldn't go and buy a supercar and put the best quality fuel in it, wash it every day, um, drive it for 10 years, but never once get it serviced. So it's a kind of, you know, think of it in a similar fashion to your body. Getting a blood test is like seeing what's going on under the hood. Um, there are subjective things that you can really feel and experience, but there, were all, there are also objective measures of health, health status, training or overtraining, uh, and the impact of that training on your body and your health parameters, which inevitably leads to your performance outcomes that you really cannot measure without knowing what's going on in your blood. So this is why I'm a strong proponent for getting blood testing before you even start to undertake a big training block and also during the training block, to see the impact of the training on your blood values and on your health, which is ultimately going to lead to your performance in a race, which is what everyone is concerned about. So blood test, number one, FBE or FBC, full blood examination or full blood count, depending on where you are, will depend on what this is called. Essentially, you're going to look at your red blood cells and you're going to look at your white blood cells. The main thing we're looking at here, and again, this is from a performance standpoint, not necessarily a health standpoint, but they're all important for your health. White blood cells, measure of infection, etc. Hematocrit and hemoglobin, super important for your health. Now, you can expect a drop in hematocrit and hemoglobin if you're training very hard. This is natural due to expansion of the blood plasma um, and a subsequent decline in that pure percentage of red blood cells. But if you start and at a training, you know, you start a training block and your hematocrit is 45 and you're well hydrated, because hydration is very important for this. Always be hydrated before your blood test. So if you start a blood, if you start a training block at 45% hematocrit, and then after three months, your hematocrit's gone down to 37 or 38, and you're feeling quite fatigued, you're you're probably overdoing it and you're using up, you know, you're training too much whereby you're using up your blood cells, you're breaking them down, and you're not giving the time or your body enough time to replenish. This can be due to overtraining, under recovery. It can also be due to other things like number two and three, iron studies and vitamin B12. Some of the key essential vitamins and minerals that we need in order to create healthy red blood cells. So when we look at an iron studies, make sure you're getting this blood tested um, or this blood test, particularly your ferritin levels. So ferritin can be elevated if you are sick and it's like in, in states of inflammation, it can be elevated. However, generally in terms of blood testing, ferritin is the best indicator uh, as to your total stores of iron, your reserves. If you are low in ferritin, it's, uh, you know, that's a red flag in terms of you're pushing your body to a point whereby you could be overtraining and you could be then risking anemia because you just don't have the storage of iron that you you know require for the training demand and the load so particularly iron stores but with focus on the ferritin and the other measures of blood iron vitamin b12 very easy to fix a vitamin b12 deficiency uh but a you know underappreciated one in terms of its impact on 
red blood cell production, but also mental health, mood, reducing anxiety, the health of your nerves and your nervous system and your overall ability to recover. So vitamin B12, big one. Thyroid function test is number four. Super important again. Now, depending on where you are, the average thyroid function test will only really test for a TSH and it won't look at your actual thyroid hormones. The TSH is like the messenger hormone sent by the brain, the pituitary gland, to the thyroid and says make thyroid hormone. This is like the messenger. But your T3 and T4 are your actual thyroid hormones. So particularly your free T3, this is basically like the best measure of the active version of thyroid hormone that's available in the blood. So you want this not to be on the lower end of the spectrum. You want this to be nice. You know, you want this to be in the the upper range, um, not too much. You don't want to be hyperthyroid, but you definitely don't want to be hypothyroid. So TSH and free T3 at a minimum, very important. And we know that endurance training and stress and all of these things that we do to our body can really impact thyroid function. So make sure that's not declining. Number five, one of the under most underrated steroid hormones on the planet, vitamin D. Um, in fact, it is a steroid hormone. It's called vitamin D, but it's a steroid hormone. We get it mostly from the sun, but we have to convert it to the active form of vitamin D. There's a whole bunch of processes involved, but essentially vitamin D is more deficient now than ever. We're using more sunscreens. We're covering up more. We're very conscious of the negative health implications of the UV radiation. So that's a good thing for your health in terms of protecting yourself from skin cancer or um, yeah, melanoma, uh, basal cell, squamous cell carcinomas. However, vitamin D is more deficient now than ever. And it is super important for production of other hormones. And it's also important for recovery, um, your ability to exert, um, to the highest level possible. So your performance, your recovery metrics, all of this kind of stuff, muscular function, bone health, vitamin D is super important often deficient and often not tested for. So this is a big, a big value one right here, vitamin D. Number six, cortisol. Um, on a basic blood test in the morning, maybe, you know, there's other ways of, there's better measures of overtraining, but if your cortisol is normally mid range and now in the, in the morning, in the AM, it's very high in that range or it's above the range. It's an, in, it's a, a decent indicator of stress. So a, a, an indication that, you know, you're overtraining or the training is too much relative to the other stresses that you have in your life, whether it's study, whether it's work, family, financial, all of this kind of stuff. Cortisol, good measure of overtraining. Seven, testosterone. So, um, and important, you know, this is important for males and females, particularly the total, but also the free and the SHBG because sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG, can increase in, in states of calorie deficit, so not eating enough, in states of overtraining and high stress. And what this can do, as well as overtraining, lowering total testosterone, can also increase this SHBG. And what that does is it kind of binds up the testosterone that's available for your body to use, and it lowers the free testosterone even more. And the free testosterone is very important to test because that's like what's kind of most active and readily usable for your body in that in at that time. So ensure that if you're going to get a testosterone test, get all of these metrics, total SHBG and free testosterone. Um, very important for recovery, it does go down in states of stress, in states of high cortisol and overtraining. And it's important for both men and women. You know, we both men and women, uh, every, every human being has testosterone in their body. And when that goes down too low, that's not good for performance, it's not good for recovery, and it's going to affect your capacity to absorb the training and to perform well in races. Um, alongside this, I should probably say as well, estrogen, so estradiol, and then all the female hormones for a female getting the blood test, but it's a bit more complicated because it depends on where you are, um, where your hormonal state is relative to where you are in the cycle. So but nonetheless, the sex steroids, the sex hormones, super important for recovery and should be tested. So these are seven key high value, high ticket blood tests that you can get done. Um, and 
you know, if it costs you money, hopefully, you know, you can get this covered. But if it doesn't, if you can't and it costs you money, at the end of the day, we spend so much money on gear. We spend so much money on training. We spend so much money on everything else. And even race entries, you know, like if you go and enter an Ironman now, like that's a $1,000. It's a 1000 or 800 US, 900 US, however much it is. It's very expensive. So even more. So to get a blood test and spend a few hundred dollars getting your blood tested, I don't think it's unreasonable. And I think that if you if you're really serious about performance and not uh, compromising your performance by being unaware of overtraining, this is one of the most important things you can do. Go get your blood tested and not just the general health parameters, these health parameters, which are also very important for performance. So hopefully that was interesting, guys. Leave a question below if you want me to expand any more. I understand this was very basic. I don't want to over go into the, the science or anything like that. I want to keep it quite simple. And it's important that you know what you're getting tested and why you're getting it tested. So hopefully um, that was some useful information and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.